Welcome back. Here we go with seven ways British and American pubs are very different. So this is from a uh, British perspective. Uh, this guy, I don't know how long he's lived here. I think quite a while in, in the States, but uh, yeah, it, it's interesting to see. I've seen a few of his videos and they're very spot on and pretty hilarious. His humor, I don't know, is like dry and uh, just, just blunt. It just kind of hits you. So Seven ways British and American pubs are very different. This is Lost in the Pond by Lost in the Pond. And uh, yeah, let's, let's let's see the difference. I mean, pubs here, I don't know. I don't even know if I've been to a pub in, in the US, but uh, bars, bars, are they considering it the same thing? I don't know, but let's jump in. Let's see what he has to say. Let's see the differences and what we can add to this difference. In the US, this varies by state, but there's not a single one in the union that mandates that pubs close as early as that. Hello, yeah. I'm Lawrence, and I'm on a quest to uncover all of the memos that Britain and America lost in the pond, and one of those memos pertains to pubs. Pubs, where would we be without them? A question that's been decisively answered in the hellscape that is 2020. In fact, while we're on the subject of the pandemic, do keep in mind, Uncle Toby, that a lot of what you're about to hear in this video might temporarily not be true. That doesn't mean that it's not ordinarily true, it just means that pubs have had to make a lot of changes on either side of the pond. And the key word mm -hmm. there is either. I think before I moved to the United States, I was under the assumption that America didn't have pubs, but specialized instead in bars. But America does have pubs. Sometimes they'll... Yeah, that, so that's what I thought. So yeah, we don't, we don't, I don't know. I feel like we don't really have pubs. We have knockoff pubs. I don't know. Maybe, maybe they're, they're legit, but uh, it just seems like, it seems like a knockoff version. I don't know. Hit me if you want, but it just seems the like kind that. Of pubs that are I haven't been in those in Britain, not I don't Ireland. Know, maybe one. And those here? ones are easy to spot because they'll say something like Johnny's Irish Pub or the Elephant and yeah. Castle in allusion to Britain's many castles and elephants. But then America does have pubs in its own right, usually called something along the lines of Merv's Tavern. And since I'm now familiar with how pubs operate in both countries, I thought this would be a great opportunity to talk about seven ways that British and American pubs are very different. Mm -hmm. So go and order yourself a pint of Foster's or Miller Lite as we order in the first round. Here we go. Here we go. The difference. The story of my yeah. drinking life goes a little bit like this. At the ages of 16 and 17, I could waltz up to the bar of any British pub and order myself an absinthe. And that's not because 16 is the legal drinking age in Britain. It's because A, door security is usually pretty lax, as in there is no door security. And B, Unlike I've here. always looked four years older than I am. No, the legal drinking age in Britain is 18. So <clears> imagine <throat> my surprise on my 18th birthday when me and a few mates went to paint the town red. Not literally, that's another story. And I got carded for the first time in my entire life. And the problem was I didn't have any ID with me. Fast forward nine years, 27 years old, and I've moved to the United States of mm -hmm. America. What's the first thing that happens as I enter a pub? I get Carded. carded. But yep. then depending on the state, it is not unusual for people that are much older, sometimes 70 years older, to be carded at an American pub. Yeah, they're very, very strict here. And yeah, you're, you're carded all the time. And then I remember going to play some pool or billiards um, in kind of like a bar I guess it's not a pub, a bar, and uh, we were not quite 21 yet, so you just have your hands like marked off. They, they put X's on your hands, so they're very strict about it. There are people at the door, just like these huge dudes at the door that are on the lookout. They they see if your card is a fake, because that's a huge thing around here too, for like college kids and stuff. And uh, yeah, you hear about it pretty often. I've known a few people Trust to do me, that saw this with my own eyes it happened to dick Van it's like Dine. a challenge course, it's like a challenge here my challenge accepted I did indeed have some id ironically i get carded a lot less these days one of the perks of being a youtube sensation huh. and 38 years old mm -hmm. so nationally the legal drinking age in the united states is 21 but that hasn't always been the case in some states it was even once like britain a pub could legally serve somebody who was 18 years or older in 1969 while neil and buzz were landing on the moon Teenagers could legally land themselves a glass of Blue Moon, but oh. only in the states of Louisiana Dang. and Neil Armstrong's home state of Ohio. And then places. something changed. By 1975, the number of 
18 states had risen to 23. This was a domino effect following the recent change of the voting age from 21 to 18. The belief being that if somebody's old enough to vote, they're old enough to drink. And another one that, that here in the US we say, if you're old enough to be drafted and go to war, you, I guess it depends on the person, but a lot of people say, like you should be able to drink if you could go to war, you know, if you're 18 and be drafted and you, so, so that's another big argument. The problem is legislators didn't stop to think about what would happen if these two things happened at the same time. By 1983, the numbers plummeted as states moved to increase their drinking age once more to 21. This was seen as a response to an increase in drunk driving incidents. And I the domino effect was complete in 1984 when President Ronald Reagan signed into law the National Minimum Drinking Age Act, which outlawed the purchase of alcohol by individuals under the age of 21. In 2020, well, one or two too. parental loopholes notwithstanding, the legal drinking age remains 21 in all U.S. states and territories except Puerto Rico and the U.S. Virgin Islands, where it's 18. Pubs, what are they good for? Well, the answer to that question mm -hmm. could be different depending on which country you are in. I mean, sure, in both countries, one of the chief aims of pubs is to give customers a place to get pissed until the cows come home. And if you've ever been drinking with me, that happens regularly. But the main difference here lies in their purpose in the middle of the day. In Britain, if we go to the pub in the middle of the day, often this can take on a quiet but social tone. We just go to talk over a pint. In a way, it's like how Americans go and grab a coffee. Coffee. Why am I saying it like that? Coffee. One country emerges from this scenario drunk on caffeine, the other drunk on the street. Apart from that, it's the same thing. If you go into the pub in the middle of the day in America, you can usually expect that to be coupled with a sporting event. And that doesn't mean you yourself get drunk and start playing polo. It means you enter a pub that's simultaneously showing about 28 different sports. That's in true. Order to do that, said. Is that different from. Uh, well, I'm sure it is. In fact, I, I'm very sure it is. Here you go and do like a pub or a bar, somewhere that's selling alcohol, a, a sports place, um, all of those, and they have TVs everywhere, huge, huge flat screens and monitor, everything just everywhere, all around you. Um, huge ones, little ones, monitors, um, projectors, I mean. And uh, yeah, they're playing, you'll see, you know, four basketball games, two or baseball, and they're just like everything else, so... It's wild here. I don't think it's like that uh, over outside of the U.S. The pub would as need much. to have a one of these. Yeah, that's right. In everywhere. America, the term sports bar is almost redundant, though I'm finding firsthand the same is not true of the term sports bra. Don't ask one word tequila. But the reason that the term sports bar ought to be redundant is that just about every pub and bar in America is worthy of that title. And that's not even, that's not even bad. I see like, what, three, three screens right here? In other words, it's incredibly common to walk into an establishment and be surrounded by television sets. And these television sets don't typically show repeats of happy days, but of the Cubs losing, or at least when I'm around. In British pubs, you will occasionally find a TV, but the emphasis is not on consuming television, but rather on consuming alcohol and the words of your friends. That sounded weird. Earlier in the video, I joked that we ourselves don't play sports while down at the pub, but in either country, this isn't strictly true. Of course, in Britain, this depends on whether or not you class darts as a sport, especially when you're at the pub because you've got a drink in your hand, which I've just realized is also true of professional darts players. Either way, darts are an incredibly popular sport in British pubs. In American pubs, even though you will occasionally encounter the odd dartboard, sometimes very odd dartboard, they're just not as big a part of the pub no, going experience. No, definitely not. There's... And when you think about the sentence, drunk people throwing sharp objects, that probably makes sense. Yeah, there's no dartboards here. There, I mean, I'm sure there's a I'm few, I'm often but... reminded of those stories of American tourists who enter a British pub, sit at a table, and wait on a waiter to wait for them. Here's the truth. You could be waiting a long time, because unlike the United States, British pubs tend not to employ table service. And this can be a problem, particularly when the pub is heaving. Heaving in the sense of crowded, not throwing up. You want to make sure you get a seat. I understand that, right? So here's what you do. 
if you're there in a group, one of you go up to the bar while the rest of you claim the seat. Mm-hmm. The one at the bar orders all of the drinks and then it's his or her responsibility to carry them to the table. <laughs> yeah. Just don't use the term double fisting. In America, things are different. Even during the Super Bowl, which is not a national dish, you can fully expect to receive table service in most pubs throughout the land. Mm-hmm. Of course, this could be yeah. partially dictated by the tipping culture that exists in America. And fellow Brits, that's not the same thing as fly tipping. I don't even know what he just said. At the end of the day, we go to the pub to get absolutely rat assed or to have a casual drink. And so to some degree, it's going to vary from country to country as to what is on tap. There are some Mm -hmm. crossovers and I dare say some exceptions to what I'm about to say. But there are lots of differences in the beers that are served. And this can vary from pub to pub or even region to region. Any pub, British or American, worth their salt will feature a comprehensive list of local beers. Naturally, these are going to be different between Britain and America, but also between regions within each of those countries. But then you get down to the big names too. In Britain, you're far more likely to be ordering the Australian beer Foster's than you are Samuel Uh, Adams. If that's not your bag, there's always Carlsberg or Carling. In America, Budweiser or Miller Lite. And if you want one that unites the two countries, you could go for the Belgian beer Stella Artois, which in Britain is trashy and in the US it's classy. It's classy, And then of course there's the pint size itself. Let me go back in time and hand you over to Lawrence from a few months ago. Great Britain might be unfairly known for its warm beer, but at least you get more bang for your buck, or should I say quid. You see, a British pint is larger than its American counterpart. To some, that might sound like something that I cooked up after, you know, four pints of Stella, especially since each country defines a pint as one-eighth of a gallon. But here's the catch. Gallons are different too. In the US, a gallon is equal to 3.79 litres. In Britain, it's equal to 4.55 litres. So one-eighth of a US gallon gives you a pint of 473 millilitres. A good old British pint clocks in at 568. And this is great news for American beer fans in Britain because it means that six American pints are equal to five British ones. You'll be slaughtered before the pub quiz starts. (laughs) Yeah, you would be. It's a pretty Aside from the fact that you now difference. have a particular song stuck in your head, you're probably asking the question, what's the difference between British and American closing times? You see, in Britain, right up until about 2005, it was mandated that pubs had to close at 11pm. On the other, given the time difference, you couldn't stay around long enough to watch wrestling pay-per-views. But then in 2005, a law was passed that said that pubs could stay open 24 hours so long as they had a specific licence. But by all accounts, it looks like most British pubs haven't applied for this licence because they still shot at 11pm. In the US, this varies by state, but... 11 p.m. seems, I mean, it seems, it seems, it seems early to us because I think it's around, it's, it's like two o'clock here, 2 a.m. And I think that may have changed recently to one. I'm not really sure, but yeah, it's been two here for as long as I could remember. But there's not a single one in the union that mandates that pubs close as early as that. In fact, 27 states in the union permit their pubs to stay open until 2 a.m. And it's usually at that time after tequila that my voice really does sound like that. Now, there are some notable exceptions to this rule. Alaska and Hawaii are to drinking times what Puerto Rico and the U.S. Virgin Islands are to the legal drinking age. In other words, they're so far away from the mainland, they can sort of get away with it. Mm -hmm. What can they get away with? Staying open until 4 and 5 a.m. There are state and local exceptions to those rules, just in case you were thinking of moving to either of those states. That's closing time on this episode. Let me know in the comments below your experience. 4 and 5 a.m either country don't forget to follow me on twitter where you can read some of my admittedly drunken sounding ramblings you can do so at lost in the pond us and don't forget to subscribe to my channel so that my videos don't get lost in the pond a lost big toast to all of my patrons who continue to support i like that i like the big toast yeah that that's pretty i feel like that's early 11 a.m but or 11 p.m i keep saying a.m 11 p.m seems early but what what do you guys think living over there? I feel like our culture for, you know, drinking and bars and pubs and stuff is quite a bit different. Um, I feel like we definitely, I don't know. I, I don't know what it is, but um, I always think of like the U.S. more as like party animals and you drink just to get drunk. Whereas uh, other places around the world aren't quite that way. They're more, um, it's more of like a social gathering. Yeah, things could get wild, but it's not like our culture here. But 
Let me know what you think. I've never really experienced it over there, so I don't really know. Um, but yeah, I, I want to I want to hear from you all what what it's like if you guys go and whatever if you could add on anything as always and um if you've been to the u.s and been to pubs here it's like i i don't even know i could probably name a pub around here but you will see them every once in a while and um I, i've probably been in one but i can't even can't even think of it whereas over there it's uh, in the uk they're they're everywhere i feel like breweries microbreweries are all kind of the big rage here right now and that's kind of what more people do maybe not more people but it's very popular at least where i am at in in southern california so let me know what you think let me know about your 11 o'clock um 11 p.m closing time and uh yeah whatever else and now let's check out some comments let's see um first off that was that was good i really like this guy lost in the pond yeah he definitely deserves everything because it's pretty funny how he does it and it's it's kind of to the point yeah here we go yes america we we're, we're at 18 you're responsible enough to drive vote have children and handle millions of dollars worth of money or worth of military equipment in the army but a beer is just too much to trust you with Nothing better than going into a country pub built hundreds of years ago with wooden beams, a low ceiling, and roaring fire, relaxing and enjoying the ambience. It's very true. It seems very uh, peaceful and good just to like chill and hang out. Chat with your friends or strangers around you. The best British pubs are the ones that have a designated area of the car, car park, the car park, for fighting in. I guess you guys call it the car park? The parking lot? That's what we call it here. This person actually sees uh, dartboards fairly often in bars. Rarely do I see anyone actually using them though. Pool tables on the other hand, yeah, are, are, are usually, um, they usually have lines, that's true. Pool tables is, is very popular. That's like kind of like a given in any bar. You have a pool table or multiple pool tables and it's always, you know, packed. You always have to kind of wait for a table to open up. But yeah, dartboards, yeah, I guess you will. I mean, they're not popular. You will see them, but I don't even know if I've ever seen anyone playing darts um, within a pub or bar here. This person, this person right here in Russia, beer used to be a soft drink, so you could buy a beer at nine or 10. Now it's been reclassified and kids can't buy beer. Is that true? That's crazy. A soft drink? Wild, wild, wild. Yeah, so Foster's, is that is that popular over uh, in the UK? Foster's beer? Let me know. One of the many things. One of the many things that I just want to, want to know about. So until next time, cheers to you all and... Um, We'll continue, uh, continue learning about this stuff. Have a good rest of your day.